Hello again to the third of these basic x-ray interpretation videos. Um, I want to try and go through elbow, forearm, wrist and hand uh, sort of x-rays and common fractures. Um, as before, I will probably skirt over and miss out quite a few things. Um, so please check teachmeanatomy.info and your other revision aids for more details. Um, also, thanks go to xray2000.co.uk for uh, a lot of these images. So, this is your basic elbow. You have a, an AP and lateral view of the elbow. As usual, we look for our marker, so we know that this is a right elbow. And you would look at the other demographic details. So, we can here see the humerus articulating with the radius and the ulna. You can see the lateral and medial epicondyles, the head of the radius articulating with the capitulum, and the trochlea articulating with the trochlear notch on the ulna. And you can sort of see the shadow of the olecranon behind there. Um, you can see the proximal radio ulna joint and then the shafts of both bones. And then again on the lateral, we can see humerus coming down and then its articulation with the olecranon and the radial head articulation with the capitulum. So this is an adult elbow. Um, in a child, things can be a lot more confusing, especially uh, if you are just beginning uh, on learning to interpret x-rays. Um, as you may already know, children have ossification centres. Um, while your bones are growing, there will be uh, a lot more pieces around, as it were, than in an adult. So it can be quite tricky to work out what may be a fracture and what would be normal, because this is a normal nine-year-old child's elbow, a lateral view. And, uh, you know, an adult, you might be tempted to say, oh, that might have been fractured off there. Well, it, that's not the case. Um, and there is an acronym to use to learn when in a child's life certain ossification centres should be there. Uh, and that's uh, CRITOL, C-R-I-T-O-L. If you Google that, I'm not going to go through it right at this moment, but it's uh, quite a good one for understanding when different parts of the elbow develop in the child. So on to injuries. Um, so <clears throat> this one's quite subtle. I'm not entirely sure if it will uh, demonstrate on uh, this video, but um, a common elbow injury is a fractured head of radius because what happens is the patient falls out onto their outstretched hand. If you've sort of tripped over something, your first response is to throw your arm out in front of you and this is an injury that causes, uh, well, a mechanism of injury that causes a lot of problems. Um, and what happens is the radial head impacts on the capitulum and you can get a fracture in the head of radius. So in this x-ray, there's a subtle line going down into the head of radius down there. And you can also see a line just there in the lateral. Um, it's quite hard to see. So I'm not sure if that will come out, but take my word for it. Um, so always look for that subtle line on the radial head from a radial head fracture. Next one, a lot more obvious. Um, this is what we call a supracondylar fracture. Supracondylar, because it's above the condyle, supracondylar. Um, and it's quite common in children. And what happens is, again, child falls on outstretched arm. And this time the fracture occurs here. Um, so we can see here that the distal fragment is dorsally displaced, so posteriorly displaced. And uh, this can cause quite a few problems because if you imagine all of the structures passing through the elbow, um, which I'm sure you will have uh, revised at some point, you can imagine these jagged pieces of bone causing injuries. So um, the most common structures injured are uh, the median nerve, so there's a branch of the median nerve that can be damaged quite often, um, anterior interosseous for those who are interested. And also the brachial artery 
can be injured. So say if you were to injure um, part of the median nerve, you could have sensory changes over the, the region of the median nerve um, and also difficulty um, with movements in the hand. So if you look into the detail of that one, uh, it could be quite interesting. And the brachial artery can be damaged. So this could cause um, something called Volkmann's ischemic contracture. Uh, that's V-O-L-K-M-A-N-N-S. And um, because of uh, loss of blood flow to muscles, you get um, ischemia and damage to the muscles and fibrosis. And you get the flexors shortening, causing a, a permanent sort of uh, clawing of the hand, um, which is... Uh, something you would definitely want to avoid so that's why whenever there's a fracture you want to check neurovascular status so now on to the forearm so this is uh, comes with an explanation I've lifted it straight off of the teach me anatomy page um, there are sort of two interesting fractures to know about in the sort of uh, forearm bones so they are both sort of uh, Italian names, which I'm sure I'll mispronounce. This is a Montegia fracture. Um, so it's a fracture of the ulna with dislocation of the proximal radius. And then the second one is called a Galeazzi, and that's a fracture of the radius with a dislocation of the distal radio ulna joint. So Montegia is fracture of the ulna, proximal radio on a joint, galeazzi fracture of the radius with dislocation of the distal radio on a joint. So now on to the wrist. Here's normal anatomy in a wrist. So you have distal ends of ulna and radius radial and ulna styloid processes. Um, your wrist bones, there's a few risque kind of um, mnemonics to remember the wrist bones which you can look up um, but in this case we have the scaphoid, lunate, trochoetrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and hamate. So um, a few sort of tips, trapezium is under the thumb, trapezium thumb, it's an easy way to remember that one, um, the scaphoid is always directly above the radius and you can see the distinctive hook of the hamate. Um, on the lateral view, a lot more confusing, but you can see the lunate here and the scaphoid kind of lies in a more oblique kind of angle on the lateral. So that's an easy way of sort of sorting out those two. A common fracture in the distal wrist joint is uh, called a Collie's fracture. Which I'm sure you you will hear a lot about. Um, so, this is a fracture of the distal radius, where the distal fragment is dorsally displaced and dorsally angulated. So you can see the distal fragment has gone towards the back of the hand or wrist, and can also be angled towards the back. Um, the opposite of this fracture is called a Smith's fracture, and that's where the distal fragment goes anteriorly towards the palm. So next of all, a commonly fractured bone is the scaphoid in the wrist. So we can see a scaphoid fracture here. These uh, can be notoriously difficult to spot. So you can often have films where they've taken four views in one just to try and make sure you don't miss it, and they do an ulnar angulation of the hand to try and stretch out the view of the scaphoid so you don't miss anything. And the danger with a scaphoid fracture is uh, if they fail to unite, then you can get avascular necrosis of the, uh, the proximal segment because what happens is the blood supply comes round and enters from distal to proximal. So if you get a fracture there, then the proximal segment can be deprived of blood. So finally, sort of looking at the hand, we can see here, you know, same wrist anatomy, and then you have the metacarpals and the 
proximal, middle and distal phalanges, the thumb only having a proximal and distal phalan phalan uh, phalange. Um, and fairly straightforward, some sesamoid bones that you tend to see around the thumb. Uh, so now this common injury that you see in the hand is called a, a boxes fracture, tends to be called. It's where you get this fracture at the head or the neck of the fifth metacarpal. This is usually the result of um, someone swinging a punch and hitting something and breaking their hand. You can see a lot of these in A&E uh, on Saturday nights or the morning after or whenever they decide to come along, um, usually stating that they fell onto their hand, um, usually not how it happened. So there we are. I um, hope I've gone through things in reasonable detail, but not too much. Um, apologies for the length of this video, but there was quite a lot to go through. Thanks again.